So let us quickly recap uh, the regional wars. And um, okay, so again, let's do the short axis first. And uh, if we have the if the heart is laid down like this, flat, and we bread loaf it from the apex to the base, uh, the apex will look something like this. The mid cavity looks something like this, and the base will look like this. So when we take the apex, okay, we are bread loafing the heart. Now we're cutting like we would cut a loaf of bread. This is the anterior wall. This is the inferior wall. The lateral wall is over here. And this is the septum. And the mid cavity level, you have your papillary muscles. And we actually divide it into six segments. You have the anterior wall here. Inferior wall is down here. All of this is the lateral wall. But the upper portion of the lateral wall is the anterior lateral. The lower portion is the inferior lateral. And when you get the septum, you divide the septum into two. The upper portion is your anterior septum, and this is your inferior septum. At the, <coughs> oh, sorry, at the base, you have your uh, mitral valve, okay? And you divide it into six segments, just like the, the mid cavity. The anterior wall up top, the inferior wall here. This is the lateral wall. Closer to the anterior wall, you have the anterior lateral. Closer to the inferior wall, you have the inferior lateral. And then this is the septum, and same thing. Closer to the inferior wall, your inferior septum. And closer to the anterior wall, you have your anterior septum. So at the base, you have six segments. We, we call them also regional walls. Six segments. Mid cavity six segments and at the apex four. If we take our apical four chamber view, okay, of course, you remember this is the lateral wall and this is the septum. All this is, you know, your inferior septum and this is the uh, your anterior lateral wall. But the lower portion, the, the lowest portion right where you have the mitral valve is, is basal. Just like here, you have the base and the mitral valve. So close to the mitral valve, the basal, then this is the mid, and this is the apical. So this would be your basal anterior lateral wall, mid anterior lateral wall, and apical uh, lateral wall, or anterior lateral wall. And then this is your inferior septum. Closer to the mitral valve, you have your basal uh, inferior septum mid inferior septum and apical septum and we we there's a little portion of the apex we call the apical cap so if you look here if you just cut off just the cap it's the apical cap this is your two chamber view apical two chamber view all of this is your inferior wall this is the anterior wall closest to the mitral valve you have the basal anterior wall the mid and the apical this is the inferior wall, your basal, mid, and apical. And then for your apical tree chamber view, or sometimes we call it a long axis view, this is actually your anterior septum. Okay? This is your anterior septum, and this is the inferior lateral wall. Anterior septum, inferior lateral wall. And you divide it to the same thing basal, mid, and apical basal mid and apical okay so that's how you divide the heart into segments or regional walls so <clears throat> again at the basal level and the mid you have six segments at the apex you have four okay so in the four chamber view you have six segments two chamber view you also have six segments two chamber view also have six segments Okay, another very important concept is when we look at the walls, we can determine whether it's normal or abnormal. A normal wall, heart wall thickens when it contracts and thins when it's dilated. That's a normal heart wall. 
okay? Thickens when it contracts and then thins when it, uh, in diastole. The heart wall can be abnormal <clears throat> and there are different levels to the abnormality. We can say it's hypokinetic, that is it does not thicken adequately when it contracts, okay? We call that hypokinesis. Or it may not thicken at all when it contracts. We call that a kinesis, or it's akinetic, or it can be dyskinetic. It's essentially, it moves in the opposite direction. Okay, we um, eliminate the the aneurysmal uh, concept. But there is a uh, concept where we talk about wall motion score index wall motion score index so what you do when you do your wall motion score index you get 16 segments and you score those 16 segments again remember your score can be one if it's normal two if it's hypokinetic three if it's akinetic and four if it's dyskinetic so each segment, you're going to look at it and you're going to give it a score. Remember, normal wall is going to thicken when it contracts. If it does not thicken to the full extent, we say it's hypokinetic. If it does not thicken at all, we say it's akinetic. And if it moves in the opposite direction to which it's supposed to move, again, when the heart contracts, it's supposed to come in. If it moves out, instead of coming in, then we say that's dyskinetic. So when you do your wall motion score index, you get 16 segments and you sum all the, 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 the wall motion scores. So that is, if you look at one segment and it's moving, it's thickening adequately, that will get a score of one. If another segment, when you look at it, if it's not thickening at all, Let's get a score of three because it's akinetic. So you get 16 segments and you sum the scores. And then you divide it by the number of segments, which is 16. And that will give you your wall motion score index. So again, you're going to sum the, 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 the wall motion score. Uh, okay, you, we're talking about 16 segments. Um, for an example, if you're looking at 16 segments and, and all the segments score two, they are hypokinetic. Then it will be 16 times two, 32, divided by the number of segments, which is 16. So it's 32 divided by two, which is so one motion score index is two. Okay. And we use a, a 17 segment model if you're going to include the apical cap. The apical cap is separate. All right, so this is the classic definition for the different wall motion abnormalities. Again, when we say you have a normal segment or a normal wall motion, it thickens when co with contraction. If it's hypokinetic or hypokinesis, decrease thickening with contraction. Akinesis is the absence of thickening with contraction and dyskinesis is a paradoxical motion. <coughs> that is, it's going to move in the opposite direction to which it's supposed to move. We stop, we stop using aneurysmal segment. All right, so the polar plot. The polar plot is when we put everything together and we represent it just like this, okay? In the center, this is the apical cap, okay? Remember we say, you know, especially when we bread loaf in the heart, you can just cut off the apex and, you know, say apical cap. And then just outside of the apical cap, this is the apex, the apex. So at the apex, you have the anterior wall, inferior wall, lateral wall, and septum. Then just outside of that, this is the mid cavity level where you'd have your papillary muscle. The six, six segments uh, is represented here. You have the anterior wall, 
the inferior wall, the inferior lateral wall, anterior lateral wall, anterior septum, inferior septum. Outside of that is the base, the, uh, the, the mitral valve level. And again, you have six segments, anterior wall, inferior wall, inferior lateral wall, and this is your anterior lateral wall. Over here is the septum, anterior septum, inferior septum. So this is a polar plot, okay, where you put everything together. And when you look at reports coming from the various hospitals, you'll see, you'll, you'll see a lot of polar plots because you can pack a lot of information in this simple little diagram by just, for the different segments, you can just give the wall motion uh, uh, score. You know, again, if the segment is normal, you score it one. If it's hypokinetic, you score it two. If it's akinetic, you score it three. So you can just score each segment and just you, once you look at it, you can you you can see which segment is abnormal, and um, then you, you can infer from that which blood vessel is 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 blocked. Okay. Um, so knowing the wall, the 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 wall, the the segments and the polar plant is very important. Okay. All right. Now the purpose of learning all of this is to determine which blood vessel is blocked or obstructed when the patient comes to, to the echo lab and do their studies, okay? So you need to have a very basic understanding of the blood supply to the different heart wall, okay? Let's take our, so if you take your short axis and this is the apex, the septum and the, so the anterior wall and septum, most of that is supplied by the LAD, left anterior descending coronary artery. And the lateral wall uh, in the apex, that is mainly the LAD or the circumflex. And the inferior wall is probably uh, the RCA uh, or LAD combination. This is the apex. When you move when you move to the mid cavity level now, the anterior wall and the the septum LAD left anterior descending coronary artery, the uh, the upper portion of the 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 anterior lateral wall is the LAD or the left circumflex, and the inferior lateral wall is gonna be probably the RCA or the circumflex right coronary artery. The inferior wall is the RCA. Then the inferior, uh, the, apical, the the inferior septum is uh, probably going to be the RCA as well. So a simple way of of having understanding, you know, the lowermost portion in the mid is probably the RCA. The lowermost portion is the RCA. Um, the the upper portion of the lateral wall probably the LAD or the circumflex and then the anterior and the septum is the LAD for the base again the lowermost portion you can just say the RCA the uppermost portion of the lateral wall is LAD or circumflex <coughs> and the anterior and the anterior septum is the LAD so you know you don't have to study it in, 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 in depth. Just, you know, the, the, the uppermost portion, LAD, the lowermost portion, RCA, towards the lateral wall is probably the circumflex or the LAD. You know, just basic, quick understanding. And then when you're apical, four chamber view, the lateral wall is probably LAD or circumflex. And then your septum um, is the uppermost portion of the septum is LAD and the lowest, lowermost portion is the RCA, okay? So the uppermost portion of the septum and apex is LAD. Um, 
the lateral wall is probably the 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 um, circumflex or the diagonal branch of the LAD, and lowermost portion is the RCA. For your apical two chamber view, remember this is the inferior wall, so most of this is going to be the RCA. Anterior wall is going to be the LAD, and then you know right at the apex is going to be the LAD as well. And similarly with your apical three chamber view, your anterior septum um, and the apex is the LAD. Uh, with your inferior lateral wall, uh, it's going to be the RCA. So just have a basic understanding of the, 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 the blood supply to the different segments. So when someone comes in and if a segment is not moving properly, it may be hypokinetic or akinetic, you can accurately predict which blood vessel is involved in that process. Okay? You can go over uh, these. Okay? So we have... Uh, we have completed uh, we have completed left uh, ventricular systolic function. Uh, we look at all aspects of evaluating left ventricular systolic function. We look at uh, the the wall motion, uh, regional walls. Um, we uh, talk about wall motion score index. We look at the scale uh, in terms of the normal, the normal uh, wall motion to the abnormal wall motion. Normal, get a score of one. Hypokinetic, score of two. Akinetic, three. And uh, dyskinetic, uh, four. So you need to uh, know these things. I 